making manifest refers to the idea that um, all of us, every one of God's created beings can um, day by day and bit by bit um, bring a piece of the economy of heaven forward by creating. They can essentially make manifest the kingdom of God here and now, um, not in a... <clears throat> a sort of apocalyptic kind of way, but in a, a way oriented toward peace, toward community, toward graciousness, toward hope that um, is rooted in creating as God created. I think that there's a real, um, there's a real disconnect between people who consider themselves to be part of this creative class and people who would generally consider themselves a creative or uncreative or not creative um, and never the two come together and this creates kind of a, a strange often mostly unspoken um, deeply seated fear or hostility I think um, where artists are kind of regarded as people that are part of our religious communities as long as they're quiet and as long as they don't ruffle feathers, or as long as they don't rock the boat or whatever it is. Um, and the artists are embittered by their inability to speak or use their gifts in a way that um, can more fully manifest the kingdom of God. Now that's not always the case. I mean, we've got um, some artists who are, who are widely accepted, but if you talk to them, they have to tread carefully. Um, and I think a book like Making Manifest, or the idea that is at the heart of this book, is, is showing that all of us are on the verge of being creative all the time. And that maybe part of the issue that we have is the way we define creativity, the way we look at it and understand it as being part of this particular group of people rather than this one. And I think that that's the real danger. That's a division in, in the, the kingdom of heaven. That's a division in the community of God, right? So um, obviously we're not all um, Picasso. We're not all T.S. Eliot. We're not all these um, great, amazing, and brilliant artists that will live on forever. But that doesn't mean that we're not creative. And it certainly doesn't mean that we can't use our gifts of creativity to really... Uh, foster community that reaches outside of itself and tries to see the world as God sees it or tries to uh, live in the world that God so loved in a more um, authentic way. Here's another, here's another way, right, that the creative class and the non-creative class divide themselves, right? Um, the creatives are, they love this idea. Right? They love the idea of being made in the image of God on an artistic level, um, where as the non-creative class doesn't think of it in, in art in any way at all. They think of it very literally, in fact, um, which it's, it's kind of unimaginative, and it's not as fun, I don't think. Um, if we think about the idea of being made in the image of God, we quickly begin to see if we're taking it seriously, that God is a God who creates, and that's how he replicates his image in us. So I, I would go as far to say that if, that if we have a conclusive faith rather than a creative faith, that we're really um, learning a dangerous lesson and missing the point. Um, that there is something to say for the fact that if we want to take our faith seriously that we have to create something. We have to put something into the world. And that, that might be a painting, that might be a poem, that might be a story, that might be um, you know, notes of a guitar arranged in a particular way with lyrics behind them. Um, but it also might be something that comes after those things. The fruit of that, um, of, of those pieces of art awakening us to something larger. It might be 
um, training yourself to see the world in a way that you hadn't seen before so that you notice when your neighbor is suffering or you begin to notice the least of these that are in your community or you begin to see the people um, in your community that are hurting um, that you're suddenly awakened to that and that's what art I think does on its most powerful level it helps us to see the world right? and that seems like a really obvious statement I get that like I, I know that I'm not saying anything that hasn't been said before but for the Christian the implications are pretty wild and pretty robust and they should really begin to push us into a territory of seeing that we haven't visited before. Um, the other thing that I think is really important is the idea that we are God's workmanship. Right? And One thing that the book deals with pretty heavily is this idea of, um, of workmanship, the idea of, of poema. Right? I think that that's the Greek, the Greek term, or how it's pronounced, the idea that um, we are made in the image of God, but we are, that we are God's workmanship. And that word poema is where we get the English word for poem, right? There's a, there's a uh, once again, none of this is revolutionary um, necessarily. It's not like I'm making this up. It's, it's a, an idea that I think is deeply rooted in the language of Christianity. We are God's poems. That implies time. That implies energy. That implies intention. That implies somebody sitting down and, and making and really looking at the way things fit together or could fit together, you know, the potential of things. So um, when you have a series of words or you have a series of, of ideas or a series of colors or a series of notes and you begin playing with those and putting them together, um, the big lie that we believe is that we have to be a specialist for that to matter. And maybe on a commercial level, yeah, you've got to be a specialist for it to matter. But that's an illusion, right? That's a huge illusion that you're buying into if that's what you believe. That the only way something matters is if it matters to thousands of people all the time. Most of the things that occur in our daily lives, I mean mine, um, are things that don't matter to anyone other than the people that are immediately around me, right? The choices I make, the, the things that I say, the things that I don't say, right? Those are all things that can drastically affect other people, but aren't going to affect a large audience.